I pray that you will help us to see the truth of your word however inconvenient the truth is and help us to embrace it and help us to allow the truth to completely change our lives fill my mouth with worthy stuff and nudge me when i've said enough in the month of april 2020 towards the end of that month uh, an assembly of three prominent preachers in south india a chennai pastor a prominent uh, worship leader another madurai pastor and maybe a few others were supposed to have a big conference the first of its kind in india where they were where to teach believers a large gathering of believers in a in a beachside resort in chennai on the subject of immortality they were supposed to teach believers that you don't have to die uh, you can be immortal or you can be guaranteed of long life uh, so that was the agenda this is april 2020 but then you know what happened during the last week of may 2020 that's when the lockdown started and that meeting never took off even at that time i raised a strong red flag uh like a dog i was barking and i was mentioning that that is wrong teaching and i brought a series of talks uh and i used the acronym d e a t h to to tell us from the bible why immortality on earth is a wrong teaching i will come to that acronym that i used in just a bit because today is actually the f- the fifth and the final part of that presentation which is now lasted for more than a year i would periodically speak on this uh, but i had other things to speak about so i did not consistently speak on that uh but as i was thinking about this ever growing number of believers in south india led by a group of leaders this chennai pastor madurai pastor and occasionally supported by a few others uh i often used to tell myself lord if you will only allow it if you will allow it uh i can actually become a believer in that church and you can send death to my life i can be a believer i can be a volunteer i could be a pastor whatever it is you could send death to me and seeing my death at least the believers will know that what they believe is a wrong teaching uh i used to think like that i used to you know chat with god like that ask god talk uh, tell god that uh but you know what that's not possible because we are uh, we cannot compromise on the truth of god's word but a few days ago in one of those churches it doesn't matter whether it happened in chennai it doesn't matter if it happens in madurai it doesn't matter if it happens in san francisco uh the place doesn't matter but really a prominent believer of one of those churches passed away i extend my heartfelt condolences uh and uh, and as i said i wish i was that person if god had given me the permission to be uh that person but it was not to be so after a prominent believer in one of these churches passed away i was hoping i was believing that you know somehow there will be a change in perspective because now this these churches or this group of believers uh, and their leaders talking about immortality on earth and one of their own dies so then that's a time to back up and look at this book which i hold in my hand the word of god and understand okay we have been wrong maybe sincerely wrong i hope sincerely wrong and now let's let's uh, you know bring it bring our teaching back to what the bible says on death but unfortunately that was not to be so now this uh, prominent chennai pastor who teaches this uh okay uh he continues to assert the doctrine of immortality on earth 
that is to teach believers in Christ need not die but how does he explain uh, one of his own believers passing away he quotes some bible verses and i want to read them to you before i begin my presentation today first he reads from mark chapter 12 verses 26 to 27 as for the dead being raised have you not heard in the book of moses in the passage about the bush about how god spoke to him saying i am the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob he is not the god of the living he is not the god of the dead but of the living you are quite wrong here the context is uh, about the sadducees was 18 mark 12 18 and the sadducees who came to him who say there is no resurrection they asked him a question the sadducees did not believe in life after death and then jesus uh, tells a story of a man who dies leaves a wife but the wife has no child and the man must take the widow and raise up the offspring for his brother there were seven brothers first took a wife and he died left no offspring second took her and died le- leaving no offspring third likewise and the seven left with no offspring last of all also died uh okay in fact the 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 sadducees asked this asked jesus this funny question the sadducees asked jesus this funny question in the resurrection when they rise whose wife will she be for seven had uh, for the seven had her as wife and verse 24 jesus said to them is this not the reason you're wrong because you neither know the scriptures nor the power of god and in this context jesus says uh he's the god of the living and the, and not the dead and he says in this passage in mark chapter 12 26 and 27 he's the god of the living which means he he implies isaac and abraham and jacob who have died are living even though they were dead they were living because that's the understanding of if you read mark 12 26 and 27 so this uh, Providence Chennai pastor says okay now this believer of our church has died this is what he means uh, so the bible says he, god is the god of isaac god is the god of uh, jacob god is the god of abraham and he is the god of the living so even though isaac is dead even though abraham is dead even though jacob is dead they are actually alive in god's eyes so they are not dead so actually this particular believer who died this particular elder who died in our church is not dead in the eyes of god so even though he is dead he is alive now i want to ask this question in what way is that different from the traditional view of death that has been taught over centuries by man of god after man of god Uh, by different churches that has embraced the truth of God's word yes we all believe that abraham isaac and jacob though they are though they are dead they are alive in fact jesus in another story in luke 16 talking about the rich man who went to uh, uh, the, the the place where fire burns he's speaking to abraham so abraham died long ago but he's still alive Abraham is still alive. Jesus mentioned this in Luke 16. So this is what the traditional church has been teaching. So now now in what if you mention this and say yes uh, uh I was wrong or we were mistaken. Yes, believers can die uh, and even though they died they are in the Lord's presence so in that sense they are alive. That's fine. but that's not what this pastor s- says he continues to assert he continued to assert believers have conquered death here and now okay not just this verse there's another verse uh, uh with which he's respond he responds to this situation of a, of a believer in his church which teaches immortality on the earth dying here and now and that verse comes from uh that comes from Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8 Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8 
Okay, Matthew 10 verse 8 says, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You have received without paying and give without pay. So when he read that scripture, uh, I wanted to say, I wanted to hear something like this. You know, we paid, prayed for this person's resurrection. We teach immortality on earth. Okay, and this person died. So we prayed for his resurrection. And Jesus resurrected him because he's not supposed to die in the first place. But that's not what I heard. Okay, there was an exposition of that passage saying that, okay, that was given freely. Uh, so Jesus, we don't have to do anything to raise the dead, to heal the sick. It is given freely. Now, I agree. All these things are graciously freely given to us by the Lord. So what would I have said? I would have said, yes, uh, uh, it's not wrong to pray for the resurrection of the dead. For example, my own daughter was declared dead in our mother's womb in the year 2007 by a scan. Uh, and the, the scan clearly said no heartbeat. And my daughter had to be aborted. We didn't do abortion. We prayed. Uh, husband and wife, Ivan and I prayed. Our friends prayed. Our local church pastors prayed. Several people prayed. And we believed Jesus could resurrect her. And we went went back to the scan, another scan center a few days down the line. It was Good Friday, 2007. And uh, we were about to attend our local church's evening Good Friday service. It is a usually a special time where the gospel is presented through a drama. But just a few hours before that, we took another scan. And that scan said the heartbeat was back. Jesus has done a miracle. Occasionally, I also pray when I see a dead body for the power for the dead body to come back to life. But at the end of the day, we understand as it says in Mark chapter 13 and uh, sorry, um, Acts chapter 13, you know, where it says David served his generation and after his, after he served his generation, you know, his life was taken away. Uh, we, I also respond with uh, John the Baptist, who had a specific role of being a forerunner for Jesus. The news of John the Baptist's death came to Jesus. If Jesus taught immortality on earth, all he had to do was to go to John the Baptist's dead body and raise him from the dead, as he had raised a few people from the dead. So we we wrongly teach people that uh, that Jesus it was never Jesus' will for people to die when he was on this earth. No, he heard the news about John the Baptist's death. He could have gone there and resurrected John the Baptist. There were several others, I believe, like John the Baptist, who normally died. Jesus did not go and raise everyone from the dead. And Jesus absolutely knows the will of God in any situation because he's God in flesh, omniscient. So that's, uh, again, uh, that's a very, that's a very uh, suspect response to quote uh, Mark 10, eight and give an exposition and without talking about what exactly you all did whether you tried to ra raise the dead and, and if you are sure that it is not God's will that no believer should die here on earth every time you pray for the dead to be raised in your church the dead should rise but you know that's not what the Bible teaches and I'm giving you an example of Jesus what Jesus did when he heard the news of John the Baptist's death okay and then uh, another response and this is very interesting uh, Ephesians chapter 3 14 and 15 and this is the classic response uh, given uh, by this particular church uh, when one of their own members passed away because of uh, uh, because of a, 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 a big, because of corona or whatever whatever the reason is okay uh, Ephesians chapter 3 let's turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 3, 14 and 15. Ephesians chapter 3, 14 and 15. Okay. We need to read the scripture carefully. Here it says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on an earth is named. Okay. That according to the riches of His glory, He meant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. So this uh, prominent uh, pastor from Chennai says, okay, here this verse says, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. So he says, okay, every person in heaven, every person on this earth, okay, they are basically the same. 
God puts them in one category. So he basically says, it doesn't matter whether you are in heaven or you're on the earth. And he talks of the time when he started dancing because this person who died in his church said, don't you know uh, I'm dancing before the throne of God? So because I'm dancing before the throne of God, you all should be dancing here and now. Now, I want to again ask, is this not what the traditional church has been saying all along? Okay, and what we read in First Thessalonians chapter 4 and where, where we know a person, uh, where, where the writings of Apostle Paul, the moment a person dies, he goes uh, into, uh, into the very presence of Jesus if he's a believer. And I need to know, tell you that uh, I want to emphasize that that person is a, a believer who walks with the Lord. And I also want to say, as I've said different times, and I know uh, I don't uh, uh, become very popular when I keep saying things like this, but I say it nevertheless. Okay, Second John chapter 12, 2 John chapter uh, Second John uh, verse 8 says, Watch yourself so that you will not lose what you have worked for, but may win a full reward. So, the writer of Second John, the apostle talks about losing our way when it comes to uh, our salvation. And then verse 10, Second John verse 12 says, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works so based on second john verse 10 and 11 i have taught repeatedly that if you become a volunteer of a church that teaches hell populating false teaching and i believe immortality on earth is one hell populating false teaching you, uh, you become a volunteer you become a supporter you become a regular member you become an encourager of such a ministry you are guilty of taking part in the wicked works of that false teacher and so there will be judgment for that so having said that now what I what I'm saying is all through church history the believers you know who die we have always said that next instant they are in God's presence and they're, they're dancing in God's presence so if you if you say well okay this person has died and he's in God's presence so here afterwards it doesn't matter, okay, uh, we, will, we will pray for somebody's salvation, uh, somebody's healing, somebody's deliverance. But if that person dies, that's something to be, that, that's something that can happen normally, okay. And you come back to the, 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 the biblical way of uh, teaching when it comes to a believer dying, that's fine. But still, you know, he, he says that, okay. He quotes Ephesians chapter 3, 14 and 15 saying that, okay, uh, uh, th there's only one family, the family on heaven and earth. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter whether you are in heaven or on earth. So if that is true, then why should you even be teaching immortality on earth? So that's, that's my question. That's my question. So I want to, I want to, I want to say uh, that this is a very dangerous teaching because repeatedly the Bible says, and I've counted at least uh, four times, uh, repeatedly the Bible says, we must not deceive people with empty arguments. Okay, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6, Let no one deceive you with empty words, but because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So if you deceive people with empty words, the wrath of God is coming. Ephesians 5, 6. And then Paul was particularly mentioning this to his young, to the young man he was training for ministry under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul was mentioning this to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh, Paul says, Certain persons by swerving from this have wandered away into vain discussion. So if you will quote a passage from Mark, if you will quote a passage from Matthew, if you will quote from passage from Ephesians, which basically says, okay, a person who dies is in the presence of Jesus. So it doesn't matter whether he's in the presence of Jesus or uh, presence of us and we should, all should be dancing. Now, it's, you're basically saying what the traditional church has been saying all along. So why should you even teach immortality on earth? And that becomes a vain discussion, which if 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse uh, 6 
uh, talks about. And then 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 4 also says, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 4 again has the same warning. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 4, he is puffed up with deceit. And he's talking about false teachers. He's puffed up with, with conceit, understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words. So these are quarrels about words. So just words, which means believers in your church die, believers in the church, other churches die. So both of them die. And we say if they are in the Lord, if they have believed the gospel, if they have, if they have held on to the Lord, they will be with Jesus. So you say the same thing. But wh why is it that you try to say that we believe in immortality on earth when actually when a death happens, you're saying exactly this, more or less the same thing what the other churches say in the light of the Bible. But the only difference is you say the same thing and still say we have conquered death here and now. We have conquered death here and now and, and so on and so forth and still assert the false teaching, the hell populating false teaching that immort uh, about immortality on earth. Okay, 1 Timothy 1.6, 1 Timothy 6.4, 1 Timothy 6.20. I want to read 1 Timothy 6.20. O Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you, entrusted to you. avoid irreverent babble and the contradictions of what is called as knowledge irreverent babble that means just playing around with words okay playing around with words so if you teach immortality on the earth a believer dies then either there is you come up with a good explanation which uh, uh, for why that happened or you repent of that false teaching but what we don't want to hear is useless discussion, irreverent babble, vain, empty discussion, which Apostle Paul warned, warned us about. Not just Apostle Paul, uh, Peter as well. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. In their greed, they exploit you with false arguments. 2 Timothy 2, 3. In their greed, they exploit you with false arguments and twisted doctrine. You know, I've often said, I've often said that uh, the reason why we have the immortality on earth teaching is, you know, uh, uh, there are preachers uh, who preach. In fact, I was not the first one to preach that way. I've heard Billy Graham preach it. I've heard great men of God preach it. Okay, Luke 12, 20. Tonight if you die, where will you go? We preach to young people. Tonight if you die, where will you go? Strongly biblical because that's there in Luke 12, 20. That's there in Luke 17, 31. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife, Mrs. Lot didn't have lots of time to repent. She wanted to have one last look at sin. And she, when, when she was having one last look at sin, suddenly she died. She became a pillar of salt. See, this is, this is deeply biblical preaching that, uh, that we've been preaching to young people. And, and this is something that is from the Word of God. But modern preachers do not want young people to hear these kind of teachings. And they believe if you preach like this, then they will not come to your churches. And they will not sit there and they will not give you offering. So in their greed, 2 Peter 2.3, 2, they will exploit you with false arguments. Okay, basically they teach you, you know, if they will say based on Ephesians 3, 14 and 15, okay, this person who died is in heaven and he's part of heaven's family. And according to Ephesians 3, 14 and 15, heaven's family and earth's family is one. So it doesn't matter whether they are in heaven's family or earth's family. We are, we are all one big family. You know, that means you are basically saying the same thing what the regular church has been saying or the mainstream church has been saying about death from the Bible. So you're not saying anything different. But why all this vain discussion, irreverent babble and so on and so forth uh, to confuse modern day believers? And I want to uh, uh, put an, bring a, my introductory remarks to an end by uh, reading Rev Romans chapter 14 verses 8 and 9. And I would like you to even memorize this portion of scripture. Uh, in fact, uh, that's something which I have I've started doing once again these days as I get older, uh, 46 years of age. But uh, I'm, 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 the Lord is telling me to memorize more scripture. So recently... I memorized 2 Corinthians 3.18, a verse that inspires me to become more and more like Jesus. 
and I had a funny uh, recitation of it which is on my Instagram and also on on my YouTube okay uh, but this is another scripture I, I I believe we must memorize particularly so because one of the greatest leaders of the early church Polycarp the disciple of John when his life was in danger this is a verse that he quoted Romans 14 8 and 9 can we read Romans 14 8 and 9 okay it says for if we live we live to the Lord Romans 14 8 for if we live we live to the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord so then whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's I don't need you don't need a preacher to explain this verse so whether you live so then whether you we live or whether we die we are the Lord so if you die because of the corona pandemic or a heart attack or an accident whatever God forbid you don't have to worry because the Bible says so then whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's and verse 9 for to this end Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living so Romans 14 verse 9 says Jesus died and even after Jesus died for us and rose again and ascended to the Father, sat at the right hand, started praying for us, even after the finished work of Jesus on the cross, believers can die. Okay, Romans 49 is very clear. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that we might be, uh, that, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. For this end, Christ died and lived again, Romans 49, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living, which means believers who die here and now because of X, Y, Z reason, and believers who live. And if they live during his second coming, he is going to take them with them. And so, But if they die before that, anyway, they are going to be with him on the other side of eternity. So Romans 14, 8 is very, very clear. Okay, now having said that, now today I want to once again, uh, uh, you know, uh, hit the quick re rewind button about this series which I began in the month of April last Sunday, if I remember correctly, last year when this immortality conference was announced by this Chennai preacher, Madurai preacher and then uh, at that time a prominent worship leader was also supposed to join in. So I, I first taught and there's this is there's a video on this on on my youtube uh, uh, i was using the acronym death to underline the fact that the bible strongly teaches against the poisonous uh, doctrine of immortality on this earth first d direct teaching from the bible d i'm going to use the acronym death so this message is already over half an hour of teaching or 45 minutes of teaching direct teaching in the bible against immortality on this uh, on earth and I'll just want to mention, read one verse, okay? That is 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2, the words of King David. And uh, he's speaking to his son Solomon. Okay, I want to read the first two verses. 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon, his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man. David told his son, I am about to go the way of all the earth. So there is direct teaching in the Bible that death is the way of all the earth. Every person in this earth is expected to die. Believer or unbeliever, rich or poor, influential or non-influential. Uh, you know, everybody you care to name can be expected to die nobody can give you give a guarantee that they will they will live uh, for such and such a time because the bible directly says that's the first thing directly says uh, let's read this in the new testament as well so that we will get this into our head and never back up no matter what what no matter what a false teacher might tell us okay james chapter 4 hebrews james let's look at james uh, chapter 4 and let's see what the Bible says about this okay James chap uh, James chapter 4 and verse 13 come now you who say James 4 13 today or tomorrow 
we will go to such and such a town and spend the year there and trade and make a profit yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring verse 14 what is your life you, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes so james 4:13 says our life is like a mist which is there early morning and when the sun gets hotter the mist just goes away the bible teaches in the new testament for believers james was written for believers that believers also can go like a mist direct teaching okay instead verse 15 james 4 15 instead you ought to say if the lord wills we will live and do this or that so even for people who say god has guaranteed long life quoting some verses okay that, that those verses should come under the interpretation of this verse which says james 4 15 instead you ought to say it's a command not suggestion you ought to say instead you ought to say if the lord wills we will live and do this or that if that means if the lord does not will you can go off the lord does not will i i may not even finish this message of mine so this is the new testament understanding if the lord wills i can live to a 99 as billy graham or uh, uh, 110 i don't know what the lord wills uh, will is if it is his will then i can live a long life otherwise i should be okay with dying in my 20s like jim elliot you know when he went to that tribe in south america to preach the gospel he died in his 20s john allen chow american missionary to one of the Nico andaman and nicobar islands preaching the gospel he died there doing the will of god preaching the gospel to the unreached which is a clear you know that is clearly the will of god that we should preach the gospel to the unevangelized but died young okay direct teaching okay so d and then e uh, examples from the uh, from bible and church history i'm using the acronym death to teach us uh, to bring us back to the bible teaching on death okay d direct teaching from the bible against immortality okay first kings 2 james chapter 4 okay examples from the bible and church history against the immortality cult okay what examples do we have in the new testament you know these false preachers say jesus died and rose again so because jesus died and rose again believers need not die but apostles did not understand it like that because acts chapter 12 if you read apostle james died he was he was he was murdered and he was buried then in fact the bible does not say if the if if the apostles believed that uh, that believers should not die in acts 12 we should be reading no 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 james cannot die he cannot die so we have to pray for his resurrection i said praying for resurrection is not wrong and there have been cases of resurrection nothing wrong but again we always sign out saying if it's your will lord this husband of mine this wife of mine has died in this pr the prime of his or her youth and lord do a miracle you are able to do a miracle you know and god resurrections can happen so i am not mocking praying for resurrections luke 18 1 says we must always pray and not faint but ultimately we submit to the will of god we must always pray and not faint or not give up luke 18 1 so nothing wrong in praying for resurrection but also understand uh, what happened in, in actual cases of believers or christian leaders dying dying in the new testament acts 12 the early part james died so if they have believed that believers cannot die if that was the understanding you know they should have said no james can't die let's come on let's pray for his resurrection so and and james was a resurrected and then he would have said okay james will now go on living forever he will never ever die but the the truth is that even the people jesus resurrected or the apostles resurrected they all eventually died because we don't meet them now they all had their death one day. We, we don't meet them. Okay, so examples from the Bible and church history. Church history already talked about. Wonderful men and women of God in church history. Polycarp, John Allen Shaw, Jim Elliot. Even the grandmother whom I buried a few days ago, having traveled from Hyderabad all the way to Vellore and then from there, uh, Katpadi Station, another 40 kilometers to Kulitika village. A wonderful woman of God died at the age of 81. We buried her. When her sister died uh, two years ago, I, I even made a video with my GoPro camera 
and I focused on her mortal remains to explain why this teaching of immortality on now, uh, immortality on earth is of wrong teaching. So we have examples from the Bible and church history to show immortality on earth is a wrong teaching. And then so D E A A, okay, we are using the acronym death to understand from the Bible why uh, believers can die and work of the cross has not cancelled death for believers. Okay, so D direct teaching from the Bible against immortality. E examples from Bible and church history against immortality on a cult. Okay, A announcements of immortality. Okay. So there are some passages. Yeah, we uh, we have to be stone blind not to notice them. There are some announcements about immortality in the Bible, but how do you interpret it? That's the third A. That's the third thing that we have to understand. And I I already finished teaching that. It's the, there on my YouTube. So the remnant who want to hear Bible teaching can go and watch those videos. Okay. So D E A announcement of immortality interpretation of Bible passages commonly quoted by the immortality cult. Okay, one passage that they all quote is 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, let me quickly read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 25 and 26. So let's do that quickly. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is an important chapter that we need to read to understand the Bible teaching on death. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26. Okay, uh, he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So using a bizarre interpretation of this two verses that this Chennai pastor says, uh, okay, until a generation arises which believes in immortality in this earth, Jesus will never come again. Really? That is a horrendous twisting of scripture. Because Verse 25, 1 Corinthians 15, 25 says, He must reign under uh, until he has put all his, his enemies under his feet. Who is he? Jesus Christ, not the church. So there's one person who has the power to, to, to defeat the last enemy and that is Jesus. He, not his body. He, the Bible is crystal clear. Okay. So it's not the believers. He must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be defeated is death. So he will do it, not the church. So that is a bizarre, wrong interpretation. And then that same chapter uh, says in verse 52, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, that same chapter says, in, an, in, mo in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, we will be changed. So when the trumpet sounds, okay, we will be changed. Okay, verse 53, 1 Corinthians 15, 53. For this perishable body will put on in imperishable, the mortal body must put on immortality. So here is an announcement about immortality. When will that happen? When the last trumpet sounds. And the writer of this chapter is Apostle Paul. And so you need to go to Apostle Paul and not some irrelevant passage in the Old Testament to understand what last trumpet means. The same writer, uh, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he has talked about the last trumpet in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16, 17. When the last trumpet sounds, okay, Jesus will return back and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are alive, at that time, if we happen to be alive, then we will be with the Lord and we will be immortal. In that sense, that last generation of Christians who are alive when Jesus returns, okay, they will put on immortality. And anyways, even if you die, you will live with the Lord forever. You will go on living with the Lord forever. In fact, I preached from this very passage in my uh, grandmother, Papma's funeral a few days ago and uh, uh, that is there on my YouTube. You can listen to the, that ex brief exposition on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, I talk about four things we learn from that chapter. So, it happens after the last trumpet. Okay? And 1 Thessalonians 4 is very clear. The last trumpet is referring to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Verse 52. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 15, 52 In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye At the last trumpet For the trumpet will sound And the dead will be raised So even here, if Paul was meaning To say that uh, if you believe in Jesus Dead, uh, you will no longer die You know, he could have You know, qualified the word dead Okay, dead, I'm talking about people who have died 
in the Old Testament. I'm talking about people who have died before Jesus coming. He doesn't say that. You know, repeatedly, not just here, Paul, as I have already, already read Romans, uh, that, that passage in Romans, uh, chapter 14, okay, where he clearly says, okay, you can die or you live, both is for the Lord. So, Apostle Paul, whose writings that these false teachers, bunch of false teachers, help populating false teachers, whose writings they quote, he himself does not, did not believe in immortality. For example, uh, uh, in Romans chapter 8, towards the end, he, there's a list of things Paul mentions, uh, where, which will not separate us from the love of Christ. So in that list, if you read Romans 5, 8, 35 onwards, uh, towards the, all the way till the end, he includes death. If he believed believers cannot die, why will he include death? Why is he wasting that word death there? Paul knows even believers, New Testament believers, who have lived after Jesus died on the cross, after Jesus rose again, after Jesus ascended to the Father, after Jesus sat at the right hand of the Father, and after Jesus started praying for us, even New Testament, New Covenant believers can normally expect to die. That's why he includes death in the list of things that cannot separate us from the love of Christ. So even as a believer, as a missionary, as a preacher, uh, you know, you, you, you die uh, as an active church laborer, you die no problem because you will be with the Lord that will not separate you from the love of Christ okay and when he returns when Jesus returns you will come along with him so DEA announcement of immortality interpretation of Bible passages quoted by no death cult so if you see an announcement of immortality okay you need to interpret that verse for example there's a famous verse uh, uh, John chapter 11 I believe it says Jesus said I am the resurrection of life so he who believes in me will no longer die so people they quote this verse uh, they say yes or no say yes or no do you believe Jesus said that yes so Jesus said if you believe in him you will not die now come on you need to uh, interpret that verse you need to interpret that verse so if you believe on immortality or not based on that verse in John chapter 11 then you should be able to use the same rules of interpretation for other, other things as well. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That means you have to take it literally. That means, uh, uh, that means you, will, you will have to, uh, you should not switch off lights in your bedroom when you sleep because that is darkness. And Jesus said he's the light of the world. So that, that you should say, even when I switch off the light in, the, in my bedroom, there will be light because Jesus is the light of the world taking light literally light is spiritual has a spiritual meaning here death has there's a spiritual meaning to death yes in an ultimate sense i'm coming to that that will be my last uh, part of my presentation today in ultimate sense jesus actually defeats death but there even jesus himself used death spiritually if you read the parable of the uh, 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 lost son when the elder brother got angry about uh, what the father was doing for the younger brother the Towards the end of Luke 15, uh, the, 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 uh, the father said, your brother was dead or my son was dead. Now he's alive. Was he dead? No, he was, he was talking about spiritual death. So Jesus, even in his parables, used death in different ways. In fact, that brings me to the next letter. In fact, D-E-A-T, three kinds of death. The Bible talks about three kinds of death. Spiritual death, as we read in Luke 15. Okay, natural death. Okay, James died, Acts 12. And second death, Revelation 21, 7 and 8. Second death is punishment in hell. So that is the death we need to be really concerned about. Okay, so and that brings me. So we have used the acronym D-E-A-T. which And I have done my presentation for that. It's on my YouTube. And today I want to finish off with this. Uh, we should be done in uh, 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 10 minutes. Okay, so what is the last uh, letter D E A T H. Okay, we're using the acronym death to understand what the Bible teaches on death and how it's so different from this popular immortality cult. H, heaven only no death. What is H? D E A T H. T triple death talked about in the Bible. So that's uh, T H. Heaven only no death. Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter. 21 verses 1 to 4 let's read that passage revelation 21 verses 1 to 4 okay let's read i saw a new heaven and new earth 
for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and the sea was no more revelation 21 and verse 1 and i saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and i heard a voice a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of god is with man he will dwell not he has dwelt he will okay he will okay he will dwell so talking about a future event he will dwell with with them and they will be his people and god himself will be with them as their god okay so in a literal sense god will be dwelling with his people verse 4 revelation 21 and verse 4 he will wipe away every tear from their eyes death shall be no more verse 4 death shall be no more neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away so h d e a t h acronym death to understand why immortality now teaching is a false teaching hell populating false teaching h heaven only in heaven only there's no death and this is not the only place the bible talks about this okay and and again you need to understand this is after the return of jesus because chapter 19 talks about the return of jesus revelation 19 talks about the return of jesus jesus returns there's a day of judgment and after that there's this is announcement that there's a new heaven new earth and in the new heaven new earth there is no death so till that time there will be death till that time there will be tears till that time there will be mourning till that time there will be pain till that time there will be pain okay so not just revelation 21 look at second peter chapter 3 uh so that's how you build a bible teaching a bible doctrine so you just don't rely on one passage okay second second peter chapter uh uh three okay second peter chapter three and let's look at uh what the bible says there second peter chapter three uh okay it's uh, verses three and four it's talking about uh, uh some scoffers for second peter chapter three verse three and four knowing this first of all scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing following their own sinful desires okay they will follow their own sinful desires they will say where is the promise of his coming for ever since the fathers fell asleep all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation so some people will scoff uh, when you talk about second coming okay so that is three and four and then you read verse eight onwards second uh, second peter chapter three verse eight onwards but do not overlook this fact beloved that the lord for the lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day okay sometimes uh, there can be a long delay in the return of jesus because for the lord one day equals to thousand years and thousand years equals to one day which means this verse teaches verse 8 teaches tells me jesus can come even before i finish my sermon or jesus can come after a thousand years from now both are possible both are equally possible so i need to be ready the bible teaches any second return of jesus so i need to be ready if i am not ready matthew 25 towards the end and if i'm living in sin if i'm watching porn and i'm, I'm pursuing that habit if i am if i am uh, uh, excusing sins in my life pride arrogance and i have i have no interest in getting rid of these sins and i am comfortably living in sin when the master comes uh, and matthew 25 talks about it he will he will when when he comes when you are living comfortably in sin chasing sin he will take you straight to hell matthew 25 towards the last part it's very clear so that's why it's a wonderful call for daily every second holiness enabled by the grace of god enabled by enabled by the holy spirit of god okay verse 9 uh, second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slow to fulfilling his promise as some count slowness but is patient towards you not wanting anyone to perish but all should reach repentance that is why there's a delay in the return of jesus god wants everyone to repent he wants everyone who hears this voice of mine to repent okay but the day of the lord will come like a thief the return of jesus christ compared to the day of the lord is called the day of the lord will come like a thief when the heavens will pass away like a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burnt up and dissolved so in second peter chapter 3 verse 10 revelation 19 20 21 is beautifully summarized in just a few phrases 
So Revelation is only explaining what Peter has already clearly spoken about in 2 Peter 3. Okay, verse 2 Peter 3 verse 10. The, the heavens will pass away. That's what Revelation 21 talks about. The heavens will pass away and the heavenly bodies will be burnt up and dissolved and the earth, okay, the present earth will be dissolved. Okay, so that's why, uh, that's another teaching which we, which Jesus also talked about in, in Luke 12. You know, wanting a, a rich man, wanting a bigger barn. Uh, and so we all want a bigger barn, a bigger space to keep our TV, fridge, washing machine and all our gadgets. But we should not be attached to all our earthly gadgets because they will pass away one day. This world is not our home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue as that songwriter brilliantly said. So the, the day of the Lord will come like a thief and the heavens will pass away with a roar and the earthly bodies will be burnt up and dissolved and the earth and the works of the works that are done will be exposed okay since all these things are thus to be dissolved what sort of people ought you to be uh, ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness waiting and hastening the coming of the lord because of which the heavens will be set on fire dissolved earthly bodies will melt and they burn so the word of god is very clear verse 13 is very important Second Peter chapter 3 verse 13 But according to his promise We are waiting for the new heavens and new earth In which righteousness dwells So what we understand in Revelation 21 Is what we also read in Second Peter 3 Okay now I want to uh, read Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 18 So some people uh, you know use this verse to say okay the bible talks about uh, this so then we must believe in immortality okay let's read isaiah 65 and verse 18 isaiah chapter 65 and verse 18 it says uh, be glad and rejoice forever in that which i create uh, okay uh, isaiah 65 and verse 20 Okay, as I signify in verse 20, for no more there shall be in it an infant who lives but a few days, an old man who does not who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years, a young man shall die a hundred years, and a sinner hundred years old shall be accursed. So they say a child also, uh, you know, when you're a hundred years old, they will call you a child. There will come a time. Uh, and some people believe that's going to be in the thousand year rule. Now, I don't want to go into the thousand year rule because there are different views on the thousand year rule. Uh, but I want to tell you, okay, Revelation 65 20 talks about a time in the world where a man can be 100 years old and people will still call him a young man and not an old man. Okay, Revelation 65 20. When will that happen? Just look up verse one verse above. Just one verse above. Read the Bible in context. That's very important. If I say sunny, then you ask the question: Is it the weather, or is it sunny Gavaskar, the India opener, or is it sunny Leone, the porn star, or is it sunny the uh, Nissan, sunny the car? Everything we look in context. Why only the Bible? We don't see it in context. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 65 and verse 65 20 talks about it. Let's read verse 19, 65 19. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, be glad in my people, no more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the crying of distress. Okay, so that's that's another uh, uh, that's verse 19, and then do we read verse 18 as well? But be glad and therefore be glad and rejoice forever. The word forever underlined uh, forever in Revelation 65 and verse 18 forever. So this is not talking about thousand year rule because thousand years means thousand years. Uh, but forever means forever. So this is happening. Uh, when will a young man, okay, we uh, young man, uh, if he's hundred years old, even that will be called as uh, youth. So that's happening in the forever rule of Christ. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the word forever is used. It's not talking about the thousand year uh, rule. So, uh, but leave aside Revelation, leave aside Isaiah. The Bible is very clear in Revelation 21 verses 1 to 4. Only in the new heaven and new earth will there be no death. So, because the Bible says that, 
we need to summarily reject we need to reject uh this wrong doctrine of immortality on this earth and uh we need to pray for people who are deceived by these empty arguments and we need to stand up for the truth of god word god's word yeah thank you for joining us sister shiba uh, brother steven we have been praying for you uh, in our family prayers as well brother steven be encouraged and uh, we have someone who's called jesus loves you uh understand you may not want to reveal your name but thank you for joining us uh, uh the id jesus loves you and brother chitrai and uh, once again thank you for joining us uh, small remnant and uh, thanks for those who watch this on facebook and uh, people who will watch it on youtube and uh, so i also want to uh, if you want uh, please ask for the link i have uh, as i said d e a t h each one is a separate message so i i can send you the playlist with all the five messages now once this is uploaded right now there are four messages in this playlist one for d one for a e one for a one for t and this is h only in heaven uh, there will be no death so so this is a, a long bible study uh, some day i will have time to uh, uh, write a, a book or a booklet about this uh, but right now we have this in the video format i'm praying that at least a remnant in the body of christ who are confused about this top topic will receive revelation all right uh, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, and god bless uh, and i will take leave and if some of you might want to attend your local churches zoom i encourage that we are a para church ministry so we at- encourage you to attend your local church be a be part of your local church fellowship bless your local church pastors with your offerings and over and above that if you still think you want to support our ministry you're most welcome reach me out reach out to me on whatsapp uh, but the, otherwise i would like you to be connected to your local church and continue to work with your local church so that we can get this gospel to every person in every every city every colony every street of our great nation god bless you and you all have a great day bye bye bye